Disregarding the potential dangers posed by wild animals is a lesson learned when it's too late. Chimpanzees, sharing a genetic profile that closely mirrors 98% of ours, may appear as adorable, furry counterparts to humans. However, it's crucial to understand that beneath their charming exterior, these creatures possess formidable strength. A lethal encounter with a chimpanzee armed with the power equivalent to that of five men can render you defenseless against the sheer brutality of this formidable beast. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is horrific animal disasters. The chimpanzee, a large primate with a robust body structure. They have a covered body of dark brown or black hair with a bare face, palms, and the soles of their feet. Adults typically weigh between 70 to 130 pounds. Chimpanzees are native to the tropical rainforests and savannas of Central and West Africa. Chimpanzees are highly social animals and live in communities or groups known as troops. Troops consist of multiple males and females led by a dominant alpha male. Social bonds are crucial for their survival and they exhibit complex social behaviors. Chimpanzees communicate through a combination of vocalizations, facial expressions, and gestures. They use tools, such as sticks and rocks, for various purposes, including hunting and extracting insects or obtaining hard-to-reach food items, showcasing a high level of intelligence. Chimpanzee males exhibit arm strength approximately five times greater than that of a human male, and they possess formidable canine teeth. This creates a formidable and uncontrollable creature capable of inflicting significant harm. Their propensity for causing severe mutilation is evident as they often target the face, hands, and feet during attacks. Attacks are frequently executed through cage bars, resulting in the biting off of fingers. Such incidents are more familiar to individuals unfamiliar with chimpanzees, but even renowned scientists and researchers are not immune, who have lost fingers. Wild chimpanzees, unaccustomed to human presence, typically exhibit fear rather than aggression. Attacks by truly wild chimps are rare, However, in captivity, they have acquired the awareness of their physical superiority over humans, contributing to instances of aggression. For Gary Brown and Melvin Mama, their chimpanzee encounter would be horrific. Deep within the Sierra Leone rainforest, a sprawling 100-acre sanctuary known as the Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary harbored a sizable captive colony of chimpanzees, leading seemingly peaceful lives. Nestled away from the prying eyes of the modern world, this sanctuary was dedicated to the protection and rehabilitation of chimpanzees. The Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary, established in the early 1990s, was a haven for these intelligent creatures that had suffered the consequences of illegal pet trade and habitat destruction. It was on April 23, 2006, and the sanctuary was a bustling hub of activity with dedicated caretakers working tirelessly to provide a safe haven for the chimpanzees. The air was thick with the sounds of the rainforest, the distant calls of exotic birds, and the occasional chatter of the sanctuary's residents. Bruno, a formidable 200-pound alpha male, ruled over the colony with an air of dominance. The title of alpha male denoted the highest-ranking male chimpanzee, a position earned through the ability to triumph in battles with other males in the wild. Bruno's influence extended far beyond the sanctuary, as in the wild, he would command a territory 50 times the size of Takugama. Texan telecommunications engineer Gary Brown, relishing a day off at his hotel, found himself in the midst of a dream come true, working in Africa. Gary's eagerness to work overseas prompted the decision to go to Africa, and he seized the opportunity with enthusiasm. Determined to explore the beauty of Africa, Gary, accompanied by his friend Melvin Mama, a colleague of Gary's who were subcontractors engaged in work at the construction site of the new U.S. Embassy, set off toward the mountains towards the sanctuary. Although their initial intention was to explore the sanctuary and experience the wild of Africa, their journey took an unexpected turn. As they ventured deeper into the rainforest, Isa, the cab driver, guided them toward the Takugama Sanctuary, a place recommended by locals and fellow Americans for its reputation as the world's largest chimpanzee refuge. Bruno, the massive alpha male, kept a vigilant eye on his caretakers within the sanctuary, displaying a keen awareness of his surroundings. Unbeknownst to Gary and his friends, 
The sanctuary was about to witness an unprecedented event. On a seemingly ordinary day, the atmosphere within the sanctuary took an unexpected turn. A group of chimpanzees, led by Bruno, began to exhibit signs of restlessness. Bruno, with his imposing presence and wise eyes, had earned the respect of the group over the years. Something seemed to stir within him, a primal instinct that transcended the routine of sanctuary life. In a mysterious turn of events, Bruno, along with 30 other chimpanzees, orchestrated a daring escape from their enclosures. On the day of the incident, there were 84 chimpanzees residing in the sanctuary. At approximately 8 a.m. on April 23, 2006, one chimpanzee successfully manipulated a chute connected to the dens from within an enclosure, which housed 31 chimpanzees of various ages. Showing unsettling intelligence, an adolescent male chimpanzee named Jido, around nine years old, managed to open the slide using a combination of a stick and a stone, effectively dismantling the lock composed of timbers fitted in the grooves of the chute. The standard padlock, usually in place when the slide was closed, was missing, with the staff unable to locate it after the event. The staff access door of the den was left open for cleaning purposes. Seizing this opportunity, the chimpanzees exited through the door while the caregiver was away, attending to waste removal. The sounds of chaos echoed through the sanctuary as the chimpanzees moved with coordinated precision, exploiting weaknesses in the enclosure's design. The chimps headed towards the sanctuary's perimeter fence, exploring the jungle beyond. A taste of freedom for these captive creatures. Upon realizing that a significant number of chimpanzees, including some adult males, had escaped, several staff members promptly went to the nearby village to alert the public. Simultaneously, they reported the escape to the police. In response to the escalating situation, one staff member and a volunteer took precautions by securing themselves in the clinic quarantine area upon sighting the approaching chimpanzees. Oblivious to the unfolding drama, Gary and his companions continued their journey toward the chimp sanctuary, marveling at the majestic landscape. Unbeknownst to them, Bruno was on a mission, claiming the jungle as his territory. Bruno, like many chimpanzees at the sanctuary, had a traumatic past. Orphaned due to the controversial bush meat trade, he witnessed the death of his mother, a common fate for primates in Sierra Leone. Upon reaching the junction near the sanctuary and the dam, instead of turning onto the steep road leading to the sanctuary, they proceeded towards a dam near the sanctuary. As Gary and his friends approached the sanctuary, the situation took a dire turn. At the dam, they encountered Bruno, Bruno, having heard the approaching vehicle, emerged from the dense jungle to assess the intruders. The encounter quickly escalated, and the massive chimp charged at the car, prompting panic among the occupants. In a desperate attempt to escape, Issa reversed the car, which only further aggravated Bruno. The enraged chimp attacked, reaching through the window and biting Melvin's hand. Attempting to drive away, Issa aimed the car at the chimpanzee, but the agile primate evaded the vehicle resulting in a collision with the metal gates of the dam compound, stalling the vehicle. Subsequently, lost in the rainforest, panic set in as they encountered dead ends and gates. Bruno, relentless in protecting his territory, pursued them. Melvin exited the vehicle, and the chimpanzee bit his leg. Armed with a rock, Melvin retaliated, causing the chimpanzee to flee. But then Bruno returned. The situation spiraled out of control as they struggled to fend off the mighty chimp. Realizing that fleeing was not an option, Gary stood his ground, brandishing a tree branch as a makeshift weapon. With Bruno closing in, Gary, driven by adrenaline, fought back, using the tree branch to repel the chimp. The act of defiance and aggression startled Bruno, leading to a brief but intense struggle. Gary's determined stance, coupled with the forceful blows, convinced Bruno to retreat, but Isa was nowhere to be found after crashing the car. Melvin is badly wounded, his foot is completely mangled, He's bleeding to death. Gary attends to Melvin. He goes, I'm going to die here. And I told him, no, you're not. You die here, I die here with you. I'm not leaving you, he's my friend. Gary knows it's time to leave right now. I can hear chimpanzees everywhere. We were totally surrounded. We took off down the mountain. These chimps never jumped out, but he stayed in the jungle. I kept looking ahead. Finally, we made it out. We made it to the road, the main road, Gary recalled. 
More than an hour later, a passing truck picks them up and takes them to a nearby hospital. Melvin, however, suffered severe injuries, losing his foot and three fingers. By noon on the day of the incident, the entire town was aware of the situation. The American Embassy, the United Nations, and other non-governmental organizations circulated notices among their staff, advising them to avoid the sanctuary. An armed police special task force from the Operational Support Division arrived at the sanctuary shortly after the incident to investigate and bring the situation under control. Prior to approaching the sanctuary, the police fired a gun into the air three times to deter any loose chimpanzees on the premises. The officers successfully rescued the volunteer and staff member from the clinic where they had sought refuge. After the police arrived at the sanctuary, they were told by the staff they discovered a mutilated body near the sanctuary gate, later confirmed as Issa. The volunteer and staff member hiding in the sanctuary affirmed hearing a man screaming from the direction of the gate. An autopsy revealed that Issa had bled to death from multiple bites across his body. Gary, haunted by the traumatic experience, was devastated to hear of Issa's death. After a detailed examination, government authorities concluded that this incident was rare and that the immediate danger had passed. The police high command wisely instructed officers not to open fire unless faced with another attack. A consensus was reached that police officers would follow the sanctuary director's instructions in locating and retrieving the escaped chimpanzees unharmed. By evening, most sanctuary staff had returned, and six armed police officers were assigned to the sanctuary remaining on duty for three months and accompanying search parties formed by the sanctuary. The incident left the nearby communities in fear, having heard only the chimpanzees had escaped and caused harm. Concerns arose that the chimpanzees might approach human settlements. Government authorities communicated with villages around the sanctuary to reassure the frightened populace immediately after the incident. Following the escape incident, the sanctuary took proactive measures to enhance safety protocols. Initially closed to the public, it reopened its doors in December 2006, implementing a reservation-only system that limits the number of daily visitors. The staff constructed three shelters equipped with concrete walls and metal doors at strategic points along the visitor's trail, providing a secure refuge for both staff and visitors in case of emergencies. Additionally, existing structures, such as the clinic and office, were fortified with iron grills on the windows. Although the April escape was not attributed to the design of the enclosures or the fence, the sanctuary took preventive steps by adding more wires to the fence to deter chimpanzees from escaping. Recognizing the importance of communication, the sanctuary invested in additional ultra-high frequency radio equipment, ensuring broader and more effective network coverage among the staff. These comprehensive measures aim to create a safer environment for both the sanctuary's residents and those who visit, emphasizing the commitment to minimizing the likelihood of similar incidents in the future. The incident served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability and power of these intelligent creatures, blurring the lines between captivity and the wild. Of the 31 chimpanzees that had initially escaped, 27 were successfully recovered by December 2006, among these 27 chimpanzees, 21 chose to return to the sanctuary willingly. 19 of them independently walked or jumped back into their respective enclosures or dens. Staff administered anesthesia inside the sanctuary to prevent any escape attempts for the remaining two chimpanzees who did not exhibit an inclination to enter an enclosure or den on their own. Bruno and three other escaped chimps remained at large at that time leaving the sanctuary and its caretakers to grapple with the aftermath of the unprecedented chimpanzee escape and attack in the heart of the Sierra Leone rainforest. To this day, he has never been captured and he has since become a legend in Sierra Leone, with many locals claiming to have spotted Bruno lurking in the rainforest. Bruno has become a beloved figure in the country, with many understanding that his behavior that day was typical for a chimpanzee feeling threatened by the situation. The victims that day were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Bruno's picture is now on the national passport. These remarkable beings with their intelligence and emotive capacity remind us of the profound kinship that binds all living creatures. But like all wild animals, 
we must respect their domain and the dangers that ensue if they feel threatened. Encountering an aggressive chimpanzee can be extremely dangerous due to their strength and unpredictable behavior. It's essential to stay as calm as possible. Sudden movements or loud noises may escalate the situation. Direct eye contact can be perceived as a threat by chimpanzees. Try to avoid staring directly into their eyes. If the chimpanzee is not actively attacking, slowly back away without turning your back on them. Retreat to a safe distance. Running may trigger a chase response in chimpanzees. They are fast and agile, and you are unlikely to outrun them. Keep your body language non-confrontational. Do not show teeth, which may be perceived as aggression, and keep your arms down. While it's crucial to remain cautious, try not to display signs of fear, as this might be interpreted as weakness. If the chimpanzee attacks, protect your face and neck. These are vulnerable areas where they may direct their aggression. If available, use objects like bags, clothing, or a stick to create a barrier between you and the chimpanzee. Speak in a calm and low voice to convey that you are not a threat. Avoid loud or high-pitched noises as these can agitate the chimpanzee. Do not feed or offer food. Offering food may not calm the chimpanzee and could potentially escalate the situation. These tips are general guidelines and each situation may vary. It's crucial to prioritize your safety when dealing with potentially dangerous animals like chimpanzees. Crucial information so you can avoid a horrific animal disaster.